Hello everyone and welcome to a discussion which we are going to have on Jacob method. In earlier discussion we have discussed that uh, how different uh, equations or methods which we are developed by uh, earlier hydrologists or groundwater engineers uh, can be used. Now we have discussed like Darcy law, we have discussed the Thais equation, we have discussed the Thyme equation and now we will also see the Jacobis. These are the well established methods or equations which have been used in centuries in groundwater engineering. However, new developments are also taking place and uh, in future we will be uh, having much better knowledge about aquifer characteristics of any area. But uh, always one has to think that whatever we are talking are the subsurface conditions which are not visible and therefore the biggest challenge is this that uh, things are not visible everything is being estimated and uh, we have also discussed several times that the aquifers or subsurface conditions are neither homogeneous nor isotropic and therefore they vary horizontally as well as vertically and this makes our uh, groundwater engineering really challenging. Even as in the previous discussion we have seen that in the country we are having various types of uh, geologic uh, formations starting from crystalline rocks to sedimentary rocks to basaltic rocks and other things. And uh, unconfined aquifer condition, confined aquifer, semi unconfined and all kinds of conditions are there. Therefore, lot of uh, methods have been developed for different conditions. One of them is the Jacob method. So, now this uh, Jacob method we uh, discuss here uh, is a, there are uh, two equations are here and uh, this Thais uh, equation we have earlier dealt so that is also uh, because they are derivatives from originally from of course uh, your uh, the Darcy law. So, here what you see that uh, uh, the equation one is the uh, H 0 minus H equal to Q w uh, u upon 4 pi t and uh, we also write the second equation is that u equal to r square s upon 4 pi t. Where is our Thais equation uh, just to remind that is this s r t q w u 4 pi t. So, the using these equations several years after the uh, developments of Thais equation the Jacob recognized this uh, that the series uh, in the series the Thais equation the w u term in equation 1 which is w u term in equation 1 is the sum of terms beyond log uh, e u and this is not significant when u becomes small and therefore, uh, the q uh, is the second equation uh, has been developed which is what is the Jacob method. So, the value of u is directly it is found by the Jacob that the value of u is directly proportional to the distance r. In earlier uh, discussion we have seen r 1, r 2 and other things in case of time equation. So, here the distance is denoted as r and which is the r squared as shown here also and the storage coefficient also storativity sometimes people also called storativity. So, storage coefficient s which is also here and which is inversely proportional to the transmissibility. So, it is the in the transmissibility is here and time inversely proportional to uh, transmissibility and time is there. So, by which uh, we can get this uh, both equations of Jacob and hence the value of u as value of u decreases as the time increase you know the time passes the distance decreases and uh, we are talking about drawdown curves. So, remember this that uh, we are talking about the drawdown curve and uh, uh, when the u is small, when u is small the Thais equation reduced to that h 0 minus h equal to q upon 4 pi t and then we use the log uh, 4 t t and the transmissibility is there, time is there, r square that is the distance is storivity minus uh, 0.5. 5772. And uh, by this uh, we derived a third equation which is uh, here uh, that uh, h 0 minus h equal to q 4 by t log 
uh, E 2.25 T T capital T T small t and then R square S by which we can write like this. So, uh, or we can also write this equation little differently like h 0 minus h equal to 2.3 q upon 4 pi t log 2.5 uh, 2.25 t uh, capital T small t divided by r 2 s, s is stored to t. And uh, this is also and uh, the source is very famous book which is of Todd, written by Todd. So, we can use this equation also uh, for the drawdown curves. So, these equations which we have just discussed are there. So, in this is the equation 1 which we have already seen in previous 2 slides back is referred in the groundwater literature under several different names. So, one has to be careful about names sometimes because slight modification has been done by uh, somebody in recent times. So, they will change the name, but the original uh, the mother equation is of course, Darcy law and then rest of the things are derivative. So, they, they may call as modified non equilibrium formula or modified non leaky artisan formula lot of new names are there the straight line method or may be some new which I have not included in this list. So, I would say non exhaustive list is here. Now, the Jacob was first uh, to recognize the modifications in the Thais equation. So, he took the Thais equation and did the modifications as we have just discussed that uh, he found that u, u is not uh, sometimes becomes uh, a minimum. So, that uh, then under certain conditions he determined the coefficient of storage or stability S as well as transmissibility. So, that can be Thais equation with some modifications which Jacob suggested can be used to determine these two important hydraulic uh, characteristics of any aquifer that is transmissibility and storage coefficient or storability. So, that becomes very important that by easily we can determine this. Now, here also a graph is given here and uh, later on the Cooper you can say Cooper and Jacob in 1946 showed that equation 1 which we have already uh, discussed can be most conveniently used to obtain T transmissibility and S historically by plotting the observed drawdown data on semi logarithmic paper. The advantage of uh, plotting these data uh, because uh, we know that in earlier discussions also the uh, the line this line should come straight and that is why uh, in order to see that one otherwise we, we might be getting some wrong values about either about observations or uh, the well which is being tested to know the aquifer characteristics. Therefore, we do this plotting and line should come straight here. So, this plot is between time drawdown gar, uh, graph and at the in time and that is in days and also the drawdown in feet which is shown here that is a h 0 means start and then h whatever the time is there. So, here we get also by seeing these uh, the uh, delta h and log cycle here. The q in this example is kept as uh, uh, 273 uh, gallons per minute and r uh, the distance of observation bell from the pumping well is 315 feet. So, values of drawdown then are plotted here in the arithmetic scale and uh, that is the value of drawdown. So, that is why it is semi logarithmic scale and time on logarithmic scale and by which uh, uh, this we get the time drawdown graph and that becomes very useful to uh, if, uh, 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 if we want to know the uh, what is what would be the drawdown conditions a well which is further away uh, or in between the uh, your pumping well and observation well. So, but just looking the finding out the you know the distance you substitute the value and you get exact location or what would be the water level in that one. So, if these values are uh, selected in logarithmic scale then log 10 becomes uh, uh, T 2 by T 1 equal to 1 and it may be shown in equation which, which is equation 1 can be reduced that is the T equal to 
264 q upon delta h delta h is shown here and uh, so by which the delta is the drawdown across one log cycle so in each log cycle wherever it cuts we, we note down that one so the equation and uh, the equivalent equation uh, for the coefficient of storage is uh, s equal to 0.3 t capital t t0 upon r square now equation 1 which we have earlier seen about this uh, Jacob equation can also be used for distance drawdown uh, curve also and uh, uh, earlier in case of Thais equation again we plotted there also distance drawdown curve as you can see here. So, this distance drawdown curve the previous here this is a inverse relation that you can see the time drawdown curve or graph here not curve but it is graph because the plot is a straight line. So, here it is a inverse relation between time and drawdown, but here is a direct relation uh, between distance and drawdown. Uh, so, uh, this equation uh, 1 of this uh, Jacob equation can be used for the distance drawdown graph which is plotted on the right side for 4 bells A, B, C and D. Delta H is here, log cycle values are also there, Q is the same time here is given for 4 days and uh, there are well numbers given A to D. So, the such graphs these uh, distance drawdown graphs of wells can be prepared by plotting the drawdown in each of the several observation wells. In this example there are 4 A, B, C, D versus the distance of observations from the well of pumping well. This is the direct uh, uh, distance which is measured or I would say aerial distance which is measured not the topographic distance which is measured. And the drawdown then are plotted on arithmetic scale and the logarithmic uh, scale is the distance and by which you get the. So, drawdown measurements uh, in, in such exercises when we are using Jacob methods must be made in, uh, in all well at the same time the observation should be done at the same time the drawdown means water level should be measured at the same time if there is a delay definitely there might be some well rec uh, recovery of, of water level and then this uh, may not become a straight line so and uh, these equations uh, like the this one the following equation that uh, the t and the transmissibility can be calculated as 528q upon delta h so, the transmissibility and storage coefficient you get and if we want to calculate the storativity or storage coefficient then this equation can be used that is 0.3 capital T small t upon R0 square. So, where R0 is the distance at which the plotted straight line intersects the graph this is what uh, the R0 is area of the drawdown line. So, the method which we are discussing is Jacob methods gives reliable answer only when steady state or steady safe condition exists. So, all these equations can only be applied once the discharge becomes the cone of depression or drawdown curves becomes uh, uh, steady, steady safe or steady state condition. Then only these can be plotted like uh, when we were discussing this. Uh, and Darcyla, we said that Darcyla can only be applied in laminar conditions, laminar flow conditions, not turbulent flow conditions. So, whether it is Thais equation or a time equation or Jacob uh, equations, all these equations can only be applied when we are having steady shape or steady state conditions. So, these methods are applied where distance is small for large distances cannot be applied because then the geologic conditions might change and you may not achieve at all steady shape or steady state conditions. That is why it is measured uh, applied in a small distance because these conditions will develop first near the pumping well and if uh, observation wells are very far then the problems might be there. And if distance uh, from pumping well as I just mentioned is large time must be long before the method is applicable. So, that means if I were pumping like in this example pumping was done for 4 days then you might have to do 8 days and so on. So, it will take lot of time to get the characteristics hydraulic characteristics of a tuber using the Jacob method.
and uh, also Jacob method is uh, especially applicable to confined aquifer conditions because the long period required to reach steady shape conditions in unconfined aquifer. So, that means it is more suitable for confined aquifer conditions rather than unconfined aquifer conditions. And Jacob method is also and not to be used where effect of hydraulic boundaries develops and hydraulic boundaries or aquifer boundaries we have already discussed in uh, earlier uh, discussions. So, if there is some hydraulic boundaries which are those uh, in geological uh, sense there might be a dike, there might be a quarry reef, a fault or a, a recharging like a perennial river, a pond or even sea. So, in such case uh, and then uh, and this uh, Jacob methods cannot give us a reliable results or reliable uh, graph also. So, this effect of hydraulic boundaries develops and before steady shape conditions are established. Why? Because if steady shape or steady state conditions are not achieved, then of course, these methods cannot be applied. So, this is another equation which we have discussed and uh, there are slight variations between different uh, equations, but specific conditions applies to all these conditions, especially on this uh, time equations and Jacob methods which we have discussed uh, in this or previous discussion requires the steady state or steady shape conditions. With this, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.